Hello and welcome to episode 51 of the Cloud Computing for the C-Suite show with Brad Nelson, an internationally recognised and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader, David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show, we'll be talking about that two years ago, AWS announced a partnership with VMware and earlier this year unveiled VMware Cloud on AWS. AWS Web Services will be launching its own AWS Outposts, which essentially brings AWS Cloud hardware on premise. Hi Dave, it's great to have you on another C-Suite show this week. Yeah, it's great to be here and I have a lot of thoughts about this one. Um, yeah, I'm sure you do. In fact, you've had a, a pretty hectic week in, uh, I think it was Las Vegas actually, but uh, no all work and no play I think. And uh, yeah, it was a, a fun time at reInvent, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, 12 hour days, a lot of walking, a lot of waiting in line and uh, you know, it was a lot of fun. It's kind of the mecca of cloud computing shows goes. Me, I've never seen a cloud computing show or um, any show uh, that I've been at that, that that's big, maybe Comdex back in the uh, in the early 90s. Um, but the reality is is that uh, they're going off in some uh, you know very consistent directions, increasing their uh, impact on infrastructure and doing di different things with storage, in increasing cognitive computing, increasing their database footprint. And this thing's a little weird. It's probably worth discussing. Yeah, sure. I mean, I saw some pictures. On, unfortunately, I couldn't make it this year, uh, family reasons. But um, I, I did see some pictures on uh, on social media. Quite a few pictures on social media. Uh, good old hashtag reinvent. Uh, and it looked it looked horrendous, to be honest. It looked like there was just so, too many people there, too many queues, and and some very frustrated individuals. In fact, I won't name the name, but a, a close friend of uh, you and I uh, posted a picture about the best thing about Vegas is uh, the boarding gate of leaving Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> I think they've had. A, I think they've had a, enough of that place. Yeah, Vegas is a necessary evil because you can't scale to you know fifty thousand, sixty thousand people going to a conference unless you go to Vegas because they have the hotel capacity and it's reasonable enough. They have logistics to get people in and get people out. Um, so you know that's the beauty of it. But you, you're, I find myself in Vegas fifteen times a year because of that. And so it's the big shows, VM World and. You know Oracle, and uh, you know they, of course they have it. You know in San Francisco as well as as well as Vegas. You now any significant show is going to end up in Vegas, and so you have to be um, willing to kind of deal with what Vegas is, and that's a lot of walking, a lot of time in taxi cabs, um, you know, a lot of uh, you know frustrating times waiting in line, things like that. That's just kind of the way it goes. So if you want to brave these conferences, that's the price you have to pay. Surely is. It surely is. Well, look, we've digressed slightly. Uh, we need to reinvent ourselves and get back on track. So, um, pun, bad pun, bad pun. No more reinvent jokes for this show, I'm afraid. Uh, right, so look, opening question for the show then, Dave, is do you think this is just a gateway drug for an on-prem cloud then? Well, I think that we're talking about uh, AWS Outpost and, and the whole thing that uh, it'll allow us to, in essence, have a... Uh, uh, instance of an AWS cloud, which is a part of their hardware that runs in on-premise, which is which means that you can stub your toe on an AWS cloud now, which is kind of unusual. And this is kind of a, a break for them because they kind of put a line in the sand that they're really not going to be a hardware or software provider, and here they're kind of providing both. It really will depend on um, whether they, how much control they have of the systems, how they're going to uh, price it, what they're going to charge for it, how they're going to get it up and running. And, but at the end of the day, I think that enough of their larger customers ask for a private cloud instance of a hybrid cloud, which is going to be homogenous with the AWS, uh, you know, uh, S3, uh, e EC2 stuff that's going to run on premise. And that's going to be opening up the door for them to get into additional companies. So I think that the, the real value of, uh, of Outpost is that they're going to be able to run within data centers to kind of meet this on-premise need. And they're able to take everything that runs with an outpost and move it into the AWS public cloud. I'm not sure about this thing yet. I don't know what it's running, how it's controlled, you know, how it's secured. You know, all those things are kind of left, uh, you know, left as open-ended questions. But I real, will say that they're hitting a niche because um, Microsoft is coming out with Stack, and it's going to be a private cloud instance of Azure, and this is going to be AWS um, uh, their public cloud there answer to hybrid cloud and their private cloud version, which is going to be branded AWS. So it's funny, we're moving to the world where we're, we're on private clouds and typically they're going to go open stack stuff and cloud stack stuff. 
that has really kind of fallen out of favor. And now we're moving to um, uh, public cloud-based systems. And then now we're moving back to private cloud-based systems, but using proprietary cloud. So it seems like we're jumping all over the place in terms of the architectures that we're, we're leveraging. My, my guess is that they're looking at this as a way to convert a lot of companies that are basically on the fence in terms of cloud. And they said, if you had an uh, on-premise version that we could run within our data center, you know, we would start migrating to you and eventually move to the public cloud. This is going to answer that. This is going to get them additional revenue. AWS is all about making money. And so that's why we're seeing this thing. Yeah, they're, they're trying to really sort of marginalize the, the loss of business by filling that gap, aren't they? And, and whose who's hardware is it? Do you know who hardware is? Is it VM's hardware or are they using someone else's hardware? What, what, what is the deal? Do you, do you know that? Well, it says they're using AWS hardware, so they make their own chipsets. And I wouldn't, uh, you know, put it, I, I would say it's probably going to be AWS certified stuff if it's going to run their, um, their on print, their cloud based systems. And so, it's probably a separate code tree that uh, is able to run, <clears throat> excuse me, in a disconnected mode, uh, and that's going to communicate with the mothership being the AWS public cloud at some point in time. I'm just not sure how synergistic it is. If it's something where it, it has all the capabilities of the AWS public cloud, some of the capabilities, if it has some of the capabilities, what are those capabilities? What about security? You know, what about governance? And and by the way, can I take a screwdriver to it? Because it's something I can see and touch. And so. This kind of opens up, uh, you know, Pandora's box in terms of, you know, what we can see as right and what we can see as wrong with this particular strategy. Uh, I probably would have, if I was uh, Andy Jassy, I probably would have uh, held, uh, held on to this for a couple of years, used it in very secretive ways and sparing ways, uh, and then eventually I think everybody's going to end up moving to the public cloud anyway, and so but they made this decision for whatever reason, and so good luck to them. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see how this story unfolds, as it were. Well, it moves us on nicely to our top three tips, I guess, then, Dave. Yeah, number one is, you know, look at where you're ultimately going to be. And my concern here is that this will be a gateway drug for lots of companies that end up migrating to a um, proprietary version of AWS that runs on-premise using AWS hardware and software. And, but if they're end up migrating into the public cloud, that shouldn't be a huge honking deal with this particular product, assuming that. But where, if you're going to move to the uh, public cloud anyway, just go there, you know, start it off. I mean, we have so many people that are moving to OpenStack private clouds. Oh, we don't want to do that. And so let's move into a cloud stack private cloud and let's finally move to a public cloud. And now some of those folks are probably going to bounce back to, uh, to, to the uh, private cloud instance, which is the outpost thing that's going to run on premise. And you're making too many moves to get to ultimately the end space. We're going to have stuff running in the public cloud and you can deal with security there and deal with governance there. So don't get too freaked out about it. And watch for the hidden costs. I mean, I'm not sure what this thing's going to cost or whether you rent it or, you know, whatever. Um, but ultimately there's going to be a cost associated with it. You need to figure out what that cost is versus running it in the public cloud. I'm assuming when I do some costs, estimates um, you know, for clients around people leveraging this thing, uh, it'll end up being many times the cost of running into the AWS public cloud. And of course, AWS is win-win because we, you can run it on Outpost, you can run it in the uh, public cloud, you know, we're still running, you're running your stuff. And so we need to figure out what the cost metrics are in that, and you need to watch out for those costs. And then uh, wait, wait out the cloud, uh, you, know, you know, why do we uh, have, have a cloud we can stub our toe on? And so dealing with hardware is always a pain in the neck. And if I can see it and touch it, I typically don't want to deal with it. I mean, I'm, I'm living in a virtual world. I'm very happy in that virtual world. And the reason I'm happy is because I make hardware and software other people's problems. So they're able to go out and allocate those systems and maintain those systems. And I'm basically dictating how those things are going to be uh, leveraged. Where this thing, it's you know basically dealing with hardware and software again. It's a little concerning for me. So you know what, we're going to have a, probably the same discussion in a year and we'll see how this thing is doing as well as Stack is doing. But I suspect they're going to be used for niche opportunities, you know, uh, or niche clients that are, you know, not happy with moving directly into the public cloud as their first movement in the cloud and as a gateway drug to actually get into cloud. If that's a more power to them. I don't think, I think it's going to work fine. I think it's not going to be a security issue. It may cost a little more, um, but it's a little weird, you know, coming from AWS. 
Yeah, they've kind of gone a bit, uh, sort of looped back and gone in reverse a bit, haven't they? And it's funny, I think that in the next reInvent conference, you may find that the longest queue ever, right, to f- is, is the, the gateway drug. Uh, every, they'll, just have a, they'll just have a sign saying gateway drug and there'll be all these people queuing up. They have no idea what they're queuing up for other than it's a gateway drug. They don't even know how much it costs or what it does or what it looks like. It's just the AWS gateway drug. But um, anyway, I digress. <laughs> Well, look, thanks for watching, everyone. We really hope you uh, enjoyed watching the show. And, and Dave, thanks again for being part of the, uh, the C-Suite show. It's, um, it's fantastic to have you on and get your, your insight into this. And yeah, I'm sure in about a year's time, we will be uh, catching up on this. It's always a pleasure. And if you're using AWS Outpost, take a picture of it and send it to us. We really want to see those pictures. That's for real, for real. So anyway, look, thanks for watching, everyone. We really hope you enjoyed watching this week's show. Dave's on Twitter, which is at David Linthicum. I'm on Twitter, at Nelson underscore Hilliard. Check us out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, all those things. Make sure you subscribe and follow the tribe and be a part of what we're doing. Some cool shows coming up as well in the new year. Really excited about that. Dave's written some awesome blogs for us as well. So check those out. There's some really cutting edge blogs out there about AWS and all all things cloud which is really cool um, and yeah so remember to share these videos and like subscribe and click the notification bell I nearly forgot myself then uh, and we're also on Stitcher and iTunes I forget this every week but um, some weeks I remember um, but do remember to subscribe to our iTunes and our podcast as well if you haven't already because uh, you obviously don't have to watch us on YouTube you can just listen to us and fast forward when I start talking obviously uh, but anyway thanks for watching and uh, look forward to next week see you then <laughs>